this is biotechnica and you're listening to india's first life science podcast the voice of biotechnica humans are considered as the most powerful species on earth they are most intelligent and have power to control everything that exists on earth but what if i tell you that this super intelligent human race is controlled by tiny organisms that live within or exist inside the human body they not only influence human brain but behavior too scary right welcome to the next episode of voice of biotechnica where i dr tanushri will tell you about who these tiny organisms are and why as well as how these tiny organisms controls humans or more precisely rule over your body bacteria are everywhere the air you breathe the water you drink food that you eat on and inside your body things you use like mobile phones laptops tabs even wash clothes as well as utensils everywhere you can think about it in recent years the term microbiome has sought attention of researchers and scientists all around the globe so you must be thinking what is this microbiome microbiome describes the genome of all microorganisms including bacteria viruses fungi and archaea in a particular environment like the microorganisms in a gut environment are known as gut microbiome these microbes can be symbiotic or pathogenic living in and on or multiplicates talking about bacteria in the gut is a key to many aspects of human health including metabolics immune and neurobehavioral traits which have been supported by evidence from the animal models and human studies but how a relationship with these bacteria begins it is assumed that humans develop their relationship with bacteria inside mother's womb the innumerable bacteria present inside mother's womb cover every single part of our body pregnant mothers release some molecules that make their way in fetal brain and seed their babies with these microbes during childbirth after birth special sugars which are present inside the mother's milk feed and support these bacteria during the first few years of an infant life both brain and microbe rapidly develops these bacteria help in the development of our immune system and develop a healthy community inside the human body once the solid diet is introduced to babies it becomes the important factor that has stronger impact on subsequent maintenance and maturation of gut microbiota organization throughout the lifespan these bacteria are considered play an important part of human health therefore our body not only accept their invasion but we also welcome it what does this gut microbiota do for us there are several categories of bacteria inside the body there are some whom we learn to live the one which is present in our mouth and can harm our teeth if we do not brush daily next is friendly fellows who lives in our gut The bacterial microbial communities present in human gut are essential for maintaining the intestinal ecosystem as well as play an important role in gathering energy from foods and producing micronutrients. The gut microbiota performs fermentation of non-digestible substrates like dietary fibers which in turn supports growth of short chain fatty acids and gases producing microbes. Several enzymes produced by these gut microbes contribute to the metabolism of bile acid that act as metabolic regulators and signaling molecules to affect important pathways in host. In return, we provide food to them and an appropriate environment for growth. Thus, we not only live with them but also depend on this vast army of bacteria to stay alive. Every human has a distinctive microbiome. In the last few years, understanding of the gut microbiome goes much deeper. Gut microbiome is considered 
as an area of great assurance for better understanding of human health and related diseases. It is considered that the bacteria that is part of our microbiome encode millions of genes that can manufacture thousands of metabolites which has the potential to replace many of the functions in host which affect the host phenotype, fitness as well as health. Whether it's a craving for specific food, immune system protection, regulation of behavior, a role in several disorders such as depression, autism, dementia and many others. In all these, our body's bacterial community play a very important role. Therefore, microbiome is now considered as a virtual organ of the human body. So how do these microbiome communicate with us? There are several evidences that indicate human immune system and microbes communicate with each other and produce a specific response. Different disease results in changing of composition of these bacteria in the gut. Several researchers are working on how our body immune system interacts with these tiny travelers and how that relationship may function in a particular disease. For example, certain bacteria which are present in the lining of the gut excrete excessive quantities of antibodies into the gut that can help in understanding what are the antibodies types being made and how the body tries to regulate interaction between ourselves and bacteria on the outside. It is interesting to know that microbes can even talk to our brain. They not only interact but affect our nervous system or maybe our mood too. In gut, several neuroactive compounds are synthesized which have major impact on mental well-being. Studies have reported the production of dupac, a metabolite of the neurotransmitter dopamine in humans is related with healthier mental quality of life. Dopamine and serotonin have composite roles in brain and imbalances related to it. About 90% of serotonin, which is an important messenger for immune system, produced in gut. Scientists believe that microbiome does this to communicate with the vagus nerve which connects about 100 million nerve cells from the digestive tract to base of the brain. The vagus nerve send these signals from the gut to the brain, where they alter production of a hormone called oxytocin that promotes social bonds. Some chemicals communicate through bloodstream with the brain. Since brain decide what to eat, microbes are interested in healthy brain. Bacteria in gut have the ability to manage behavior and mood through altering the neural signals in the vagus nerve, changing taste receptors, producing toxins to make us feel bad, and liberating chemicals to make us feel good. However, the microbes that live outside the human body, like those present in soil, are not able to synthesize same kind of neurotransmitters. The reason might be that these microorganisms have co-evolved with humans and therefore have not learned to gain advantage from invading into host nervous system. Although there is a heritable path to gut microbiota, several environmental factors such as related to diet and drugs decide composition of gut microbiota, which in turn can affect our health. Entered indirectly in our body, through so food chain have various metabolic consequences that vary from person to person. Antibiotics are used for livestock farming in many countries. Several human studies as well as many rodent studies have provided an obesogenic effect of antibiotics in humans in minute doses found in food. Therefore, extensive research on gut microbiome is required to better understand the effect of antibiotics, chemicals such as pesticides sprayed on crops on them. Several animal studies have shown that sugar substitutes such as aspartate, sucralose as well as saccharin and food additives such as emulsifiers which are present in processed food have negative effects on the animal's gut microbiota. The production of trimethylamine from carnitin and dietary phosphatidylcholine, dairy and meat products by gut microbiota varies between people depending on the food they consume. 
This trimethyl amine oxidized in the liver to trimethyl amine and oxide, which is associated with an increased risk of atherosclerosis, buildup of plague inside arteries, and major adverse cardiovascular events. Some people follow restrictive diets like raw food, vegan, gluten free diet, which may also raise some concern as these may have some side effects on gut health. So there is a strong relation in what you eat decides what type of bacteria you breed or what type of bacteria present in your body decides what to eat. These microbes which initially come from our mother but how they develop and changes depend on what we eat. For example, some bacteria like fibers whereas some like if we eat a lot of fast food we breed fast food loving bacteria which takes up space for vegetable eating bacteria and also sends signals to the brain to eat fast food. Thus, gut microbiota seems to play an important role in development and progression of obesity. So we can reverse fast food or cheese liking bacteria with vegetables liking or fiber food bacteria and this intensifies the strong connection between diet and microbiome. Also, it's not just about the bacterial numbers, but their diversity too. It has been observed that the people suffering from inflammatory bowel disease type 1 or 2 diabetes, obesity and atopic eczema have lower bacterial diversity than healthy individuals. This indicates that the gut ecosystem which is rich in microbe species is more robust against environmental influences. If any microbe species is missing, its function is being performed by more related microbes. Thus, diversity seems to be a good indicator of a healthy gut. However, increase in dietary fibers or specific type of diet may temporarily reduce the diversity as the microbes related to digestion of fibers increases, leading to change in composition via competitive interactions. It has been reported that the people who lack certain bacteria in their gut are more likely to undergo depression. Studies have provided evidence that the bacteria Dilister and Coprococcus were uncommon in depressed people. It might be possible that the people suffering from depression may have different eating habits and they have led to changes in their gut flora, resulting in their low levels and in turn responsible for depression. Some researchers also believe that bacteria living within our bodies may cause stomach or other cancers. Thus, the evolution of tumors and bacterial communities are linked. There are several evidences where minor changes in microbiota can result in major changes in immune chemotherapy treated cancer patients, autoimmune disorders and bone marrow recipients. For example, studies have shown that spicoestrogens have protective effect on breast cancer which depends on the presence of several intestinal bacteria such as Lactonic factor longoformis, Clostridium saccharopneumia, Blotia producta and Agathella lenta that can convert isoflavones into bioactive compounds. Targeting the microbiome, there is a possibility for preventing a variety of diseases such as diabetes and gastrointestinal tract cancers. The treatment is possible by using probiotics that increase the populations in the gut treatment. Probiotics are live microorganisms that when given in appropriate amount have health benefits on the host. Among probiotics, mostly lactobacillus species and bifidobacterium species are included in our products such as dietary supplements, drugs and food. There are concerns that most microbe supplements are unable to set themselves in the gut and in turn do not exert any effect on the resident community. However, they have a direct effect on the host through production of bioactive compounds or immune modulation. But prior to probiotic treatment, it is important to know about the substances synthesized by these bacteria followed by their testing. This is a challenging task as this diverse and complex bacterial community of gut microbiome keeps on changing during different stages of life. The human microbiota undergo most prominent fluctuations during infancy and old age. This is the time when our human immune health is most unstable and weakest. 
the elderly people have different bacterial gut microbiota profile than healthy adults. There are evidences that suggest association of gut microbiota with age-related chronic conditions of health and inflammation, and hence could be exploited as a presumed target to improve the aging process. Understanding the functional role of human gut microbiome, the researchers have come up with fecal microbiota transplantation. It's not yet clinical practice, but has been explored where feces from a healthy donor is transplanted to recipients with metabolic syndrome resulting in better insulin sensitivity. Fecal microbiota transplantation provides the support in the treatment of recurrent clostridium difficult infection with cure rates reported up to 90% in clinical trials. However, the FMT used in other conditions such as obesity, inflammatory bowel disease, metabolic syndrome and functional gastrointestinal disorders is still controversial. Thus, more studies are required to fill in gaps in understanding microbiome composition, function and bacterial prebiotics, probiotics or fecal microbiota transplantation to assess changes in microbiota composition and in health outcomes. The extensive catalogue of human gut bugs will help scientists to recognize the specific bacteria in patients' bodies and lead research into new treatments for conditions such as psychiatric, neurological, allergies, obesity, aging, bowel syndrome and many disorders. So now you might have understood better that your diet plays an important role in the development of healthy bacteria inside your body. Your microbiome not only indicates about what is going inside you, but also keeps you healthy as well as happy. Because after all, it's not you, but your microbiome that rules over your body.